Hmm. Okay, here we go. Finally getting to it, folks. So, uh, not going to play any music. Not really going to chat much. I'll keep an eye on the chat as I go, but uh, I'm doing this for me. So, I'm just going to have some fun with it. And uh, if anybody likes it, great. Okay. So, we are going to be painting up this little sculpt I made for funsies. This is just for a uh, co-worker friend of mine who uh, has this, uh, probably the most adorable little dog in the world, uh, named Joaquin. So, I made this little um, flattering likeness, kind of pet portrait. I wasn't sure what I was doing. Just wanted to see if I could do it. But, you know, pretty much copying this one particular pose on his Instagram. It's... Uh, Joaquin underscore on sunshine if you want to follow him and uh, Yeah, he's pretty adorable. So this is just a little fun little sculpt didn't super sculpty gray firm and uh, Yeah, a couple hours just in the middle of meetings keeping my hands busy while I'm listening to people But um, you know, it's pretty good. I like the detail I'm happy with it So I'm just gonna be doing some painting now. I wasn't really planning on doing painting, but I figured it was a good subject for uh, trying out the streaming see if this works so uh, I'm just going to do some simple coats um, and you know, can see closely that the natural uh, brush strokes, let's see if I can turn this up one more degree of magnify. The uh, simple brush strokes make a pretty, pretty good fur pattern. I did sculpt quite a bit of fur pattern into that. And uh, you know, a little hint at whiskers with those spots uh, a lot of little strokes so really wasn't going for every grain of hair and fur as you do with sculpting hair but um you know i think it's a pretty good facsimile of a fluff fluffy dog so uh yeah i'm just going to be doing some paint strokes simulate the um the hair i just did a simple coat of white so far so it's just this gray clay and i just did one coat of white. You see the coverage is pretty good. It may not show up in this light, but it's actually um, it's actually gray gray clay with a little white coating on top, so uh, let's see. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna get to it. So I'm gonna just layer on a few different um, a few different colors here. Got some okra out, got some flesh tone. I think the Colors somewhere in between those for the uh, the dark parts of his ears, and uh, you know just some regular other colors for the rest: some brown, black, and pink for the tongue. Um, these are some nice Liquitex um, acrylics that I got that uh, I've watered down a little bit for airbrush and put in these little containers. But they are just um, actually this isn't Liquitex. Which one is this? I guess it's this brand. I've got I've got a few different sets of acrylics, but um, the the brands that are you know a little more expensive are a lot better than these they just have a different um, different way of drying they they mix better with water they don't clump up as easily I find and especially if you want to get that um, heavy body feel or even um, the ability to mix and blend colors uh, I find these other uh, expensive acrylics so-called expensive they're not actually that bad I mean I'm not even complaining, but they uh, generally work really well, so I'm happy with them. All right, let's see how good this ochre looks. I'm anticipating I'm going to have to blend it a little bit with this flesh color. I might even put a little bit of it underneath just to see, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need some some kind of pink to, to bring it more towards a little bit of a brown without going brown because I don't want to I don't want to just stick brown on there because that would be too dark so um, you know this this flesh color is a pretty good somewhere in between it's got pink and ochre already in it and you know mixed with it it'll uh, it'll do pretty well so let me just see what happens it's already got that white going so uh, 
Essentially, it's almost out of brown. So we'll see what happens. Get this light just right here. There we go. That's a little better. Try not to get it into the camera. A little tricky. Apologize in advance if I uh, get this double camera thing out of whack here, but I figure this is the best way to do this. You get to see what I'm seeing. And I can just do it live. Do, do, do. Uh, some people like gloves and things. I don't know. I can't can't seem to paint or sculpt with gloves on. Something about actually touching it and uh, I nearly always get paint all over my hands, which is another good reason to use acrylics and not some toxic gross paints. Let's see, so that's looking pretty good. So basically what I want to get is a darker tint towards the ears tips and the um, underside there. So I'm starting with that fleshy color because I'm going to cover over it with the ochre and uh, and then white on top of that. So let's see what happens. Kind of curious. It's probably going to be a little too yellowy, but I mean it's kind of a kind of a white blonde dog anyway, so I'm not too worried about it being on the yellow side. That's not bad. I think I want a slight, slight hint of brown, but I kind of like where that's going. It looks a little too bright yellow on camera, but this, um, whatever the color correction is doing, I don't like it. But in my eyes, this color is a lot less ew, looks like green here. It's, it's actually a really nice ochre color. So I will mess around with balancing color later. Yeah, see actually there it looks, it looks more of a yellow. You see it through the bottle there. All right, let me get a little bit of brown in there. Let's see what happens. Hopefully this stream is working. It says it's live. I will find out, huh? Don't expect lots of people to finally see this after all these years. It's been a while. I had this channel up for, God, I don't know, 10 years now. When I did that original class, uh, which is a class I've been teaching for a long time. I've been doing that class at different schools in uh, Vancouver years before that even. So it's been around for a while, but I... Um, Finally, 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 after all these years getting into doing some streaming. So we'll see what happens. Again, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do anything with this. I'm doing this mostly to keep myself doing some fun work for me. Because I need to as an artist. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I might take some suggestions later. Um, yeah, basically I'm I'm really just doing this for for the fun of it. Uh, you know, do other things for work, but with this uh, sculpting stuff and even this little making little fun things for people, I don't know, don't really uh, have it in me to pursue a full time career in that. It just doesn't, never seem to work out. But that's okay. I'm actually quite okay with that. I'd much rather have a steady check, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, so I'll be doing these for fun and maybe for people. If people want to suggest things. I'd be open to that and uh, may even send you what I make for free. Well, if you want to cover some shipping, I wouldn't be against that. But uh, I am um, probably going to be making some fun free stuff for people and continue that because that seems to be what gets me motivated to do this stuff and makes me feel good to do fun little projects like this so i'll keep doing it and uh there's no rules i'm not you know not a contest or anything it'll just be for fun
All right, I'm getting a pretty good brown in there. I'm liking where it's going. A lot less uh, angry green, yellowy, and a lot more towards a blonde sort of brown. I'm gonna mix maybe a little. See, you never wanna go yellow. Like you think blonde, you're like, oh, let me throw some yellow and white. No, nope, never. It's it's a deep, deep ochre. Yellow ochre is the way to go. It's got a little bit of a green tint to it, a little bit of a brownish, if you want to call it brown, in there, which is really just a mixture of other colors on the wheel, color theory stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's why I like to never just use straight up pigments for that kind of thing. So I'm going to get a little more yellow in here where the, the yellowest parts of his fur go. I might even throw uh, like a watered down thin version. Now I don't have really, uh, probably should have a little palette here, but um, as other people do, I'm sure I just have a thumb sitting right here, so why not use it? So uh, I just hate dirtying up a whole palette and having to scrape off paint. So I'm trying to be a little frugal. Anyway, I'm trying to water this down, so I just put a drop of water in there. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna brush over maybe the whole thing with a real quick and easy yellow brush, a yellow ochre brush, because I want to get I want to get a nice thin coat of yellow underneath for when I'm do the when I do the white again. This also will help with coverage over this ugly gray. And I think it'll work. It looks pretty good. I'm going to stay away from the snout. The snout is mostly white, so another coat of white on that snout should do it. And I'm saving all of the black for last just because it's really not necessary to do at the beginning. And I don't want to interfere with it, so. Anyway, this will be recorded, I'm sure is fine. I'm not really into doing lots of live chatting. I don't know. We'll see. If people start wanting to watch these regularly and there's some conversation, I wouldn't mind. But mostly doing this, so I figure you have your own music to listen to. And, you know, if you want to just watch it as a lesson of something. I usually do little lessons that are um, like little classes that can be done. So I might start doing some more things like that, but I think I'm more project driven motivation wise, so I may end up uh, just doing lots of little projects like this and showing you what I'm up to. There we go, getting a nice. Uh, Thin coat of yellow, I'm trying not to bob Ross too much here, but I can't help it. Miss him, love him. Oh, but that's basically what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not some expert painter here. I'm just uh, a sculptor who likes to paint things sometimes in all fairness and honesty so I'm uh, just doing kind of guessing. I'm not 100% sure. I usually get lucky. I've done some airbrushing. Had some good results but uh, I don't do a lot of painting. All right, we're getting some nice little yellow tones across this dog. He's looking nice and blonde. In that bright light, you can see it's working pretty well. I'm trying to figure out a way to hold on to it without getting it all over my fingers, but not having too much luck. All right, well, problem is if you don't get this paint thick enough, you end up scraping the first layer off and getting a little, uh, little of that gray showing through. So I'm kind of... Let me see if I can adjust this. Yeah, there we go. Slotching a little bit and losing the camera, so let's see if we can get this, keep this in cam. Get that out. There you go. A little better. Yeah. All right, we've got a pretty good coat there. No pun intended. 
of uh, color. Now we will do a few coats of white. Let's see if we can can't get that fur just looking just right. And then I may end up having to do some some little work with a couple little you know rough or rough hairy brushes. I might do some purposeful strokes of of color in there, but I'm not really you know like anything with clay. Same with the paint. You don't want to you're not, you're not going to paint every stroke of hair. You're always trying to come up with a way to simulate it with uh, techniques, texture, something in between. All right, I'll get my lids back on so I don't lose my paint. While it dries a little bit, I want it to be a little bit dry for the next round of white. That is the office cat duchess. In office, I mean my office, and by my cat, I mean my daughter's cat technically, but she's a uh, little companion over here. She sits there, hangs out. She's gonna be meowing. And yeah, no, she does like the she does like the belly rubs. There you go. She's of course ruined that chair, but it was already a old chair, so she can have it. What? Yeah, you're okay. All right, she's a good cat. So let's get some white. Okay, here we go. Uh, Probably just get a little more on the lid so I have something to work with here. So I'm just gonna shake it upside down. There we go. Probably get enough out of here to get another coat. Again, this was watered down for uh, for uh, airbrushing, but it's sort of evaporated and settled, which is making it a pretty good consistency. It's not quite as thick as the original uh, heavy body acrylics but it's it's got a nice it's got a nice coat for it uh, nice coverage but still a little watery so I can do what I need to do here all right so I'm gonna stay a little bit away from the snout and the black line around the lips but um, I do want a nice uh, a coat on the tongue for when I do the pink so I'm just gonna quickly hit all that one more time now I've got a little bit of ochre mixed in with this brush still because I didn't really clean it out, which is fine. Actually, that's kind of the blonde. That's kind of the blonde color I want. I can't really see it. It's pretty subtle. So I'm just going to go around and do one more coat everywhere, and I'm going to stroke in the direction of the fur on purpose, and I should get nice coverage and have a nice hint of blonde fur underneath. <laughs> yep. I kind of like where that's going, so I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to see if I, what it looks like doing a light, lighter pressure here and there. I'm trying to get the brush strokes on purpose. I want to see little patchy fur bits. It's kind of a fluffy dog. Let's see the direction is gonna change. Right about there. And of course, the eyes aren't going to look right until I get that black in there. 
and a little brown around it, but I'm kind of getting that naturally by having this undercoat here. Oop, a little too thick, so now I gotta spread that out real quick, which is okay because it's nice and watered down a little bit there. There we go. Got a brush hair. Ah. Okay, kind of like it. Wasn't really sure how it was going to go there. Get a little more towards the ear. I want to cover up that little spill because that was a little rough there. And there we go. Spread it back. Okay, now I'm going to start working down the ear, see how that works out. A little tricky because I'm not it's not a true tint, right? You do uh, you wait till it dries too much, and then you end up just doing a whitewash on top. And then if you have a wet spot in the middle there still, like I just found, you end up mixing that color right back on top. So somewhere in between, I want to have some play with the color, but also have a little bit of mix of that in between underneath. Pretty happy with it. It's nice. Looks about right. Okay. So don't really care too much about the back of the head, but I'm going to try to get a nice clean go at it. Let's see here. I get lots of little strokes going and going in the right direction, so I'm going to come back, I think, with a few bristly or brush right now. I'm just trying to get the coverage, to get the tones back where they should be. It's a little too yellow. Good there. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go with the get the whiter parts of the fur in. I'm gonna come back at the snout. I want the snout to be pretty white, approaching the nose. I'm just getting a little more like a dry brush, just wiping off on my fingers. There we go. Got a nice blend from the white, white snout to the blonde, to the brown bits. Okay, I like that. One side is way more done than the other. I'm going to come back at this, try to balance this out.
I'm liking that. Such a cute dog. And if you're curious, I do not know what breed he is. Um, I'm pretty sure he was a rescue. Belongs to my coworker Thomas, who uh, says he's fully grown. Still looks like a little puppy. Pretty adorable. So I'm kind of letting a little bit of that color in that deep crack, which is still there, leak onto that brush because I don't want really a pure white most of the time. So I'm just sort of borrowing from what's there as if it's a piece of the, a little bit of the palette. I'm going to probably come back with a little a tint wash of some sort of brown. But I kind of like having that under color under this white. I'm just going to go back and forth. Try not to layer too much because I'm, you know, acrylics can build up pretty fast. You want coverage, but you don't want to get, most of the time, you do not want to get strokes. Uh, it seems like the nose is a pretty convenient little holding spot right now. I just realized I did not have to paint it right now. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I think I'm going to try to get some real interesting final strokes, see how that comes out. Get some nice hair direction. Pretty near invisible on a blonde dog, but if you get close enough, you can see that I'm I'm sort of matching the direction. It'll be better in real life, but it works. It works. I like it. I can see little strokes and hair coming through. Looking pretty good to me. I'm okay with it. Got that little brown on the ears, looking nice. Come a little bit more down. In some pictures, most of his ear looks more brown than just the tip or the underside. So I'm kind of trying to balance between a few references. Essentially, anything that's not pure white is going to look more realistic than just throwing a white spray paint on this. Even this little bit of gray that's coming through, it's not too bad for the purposes of looking like fur. If I just dust over a few pieces of high points and, and focus on the, the parts that are more white in real life, It'll just look more and more real. We'll see as it dries. It's gonna maybe get a little thinner. You might start to see through it a little more each time it dries. So it's tricky about white on a dark surface. I probably could have primed it with a white spray paint first. But you know, every time you do that, you end up with thicker layers. So I'm trying to keep the details. So lots of little strokey strokes on purpose. Trying to get that brush, that brushy stroke look. It's quite subtle on camera there. I'm pretty happy with it when I can see. All right. Do have to finish this fur completely before I do these details, especially because I'm holding on to the nose now. 
might be able to get the tongue going. But I got a little bit of a wet paint in that crack. I'm going to spread that out. I have a chance to dry before I come back to it. A little bit darker pink if I'm looking at the reference. A little darker towards the middle and back, but that'll be pretty easy to do. Oh, this is dry. All right, there we go. All right, let's try a little bit of a brown wash, and then maybe can do the eyes and around the lips. I'll definitely save the nose for last, and even the gold on his uh, little collar there, dog tag. Just trying to get a few more fur strokes now that it's drying. I can see the gray come through a little more, which is what I do not want to see. So just going to quickly wash over another layer of white while I'm looking at it. really just looks like it's all white on camera, but there is some subtlety there, I promise. Let me see if I get that light. Ooh, there we go. I can almost see it better if I don't have so much light on it. It's got some nice little browns popping through. Mostly it's a mixture between the blonde and the, the white, but I mean, to most people, it just looks like a white dog. So I don't need to be too subtle here. All right, I think I'm pretty good. I want to start doing some blending with the eyes. I'll see if I can't get uh, first that little brown, slight brown tint around the eyes there. And then the black. Let's see if I can't just make his eyes come alive there. I chose to close them just to match this reference. Was uh, you know, it was a little easier, but it was such a cute picture that it made sense to do it that way. I did have them open originally, but it wasn't really working uh, size-wise. It's it's tricky when you're doing a it's it's a fine line between caricature and and uh, portrait. And when you do something a little too realistic size-wise, it feels wrong. So everybody's so used to seeing caricature, anime-style big eyes. But anyway, part of the experiment. I haven't done, haven't done a lot of portraits of pets, really. So this was sort of a fun experiment for that, too. Okay, so it looks like a light brown wash is working just right for this so i'm going to just go ahead and stroke a little bit of that into there i like what it did on top and i'm gonna to have to cover what i just did on the bottom but i like it it looks furry it's got a nice little blend See if I can get it just right. I'm trying to get a really subtle, subtle brown, and then I just go and wreck it 
Uh, looks like scraping it away a little bit with the brush after drying it off. Seems to be working. That's the trickiest thing about these acrylics. I don't know. Not the greatest to use for this kind of thing, but oils take so long to dry. But I just don't have the patience. So I've always used acrylics. All right, I like that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's blending and what the brown looks like washed out like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the ears as well, just to give another little accent to that fur color. Work my way around the tip. And yeah, that's it. That's what he looks like. Oh, I like it. I like it. I'm just trying to vary it around there, get a nice little subtle dark in the middle around the crack, the flap of the ear. Around the tip of the ear, and spreading it back into the other white. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. I'm wiping it off with my finger because it's there. Some real subtle dry brushing there, but that's what gets that the furry texture, but also it lets me blend real smooth. And you see that the tops, the highlights are, are kicking in with the uh, the actual texture that's sculpted in. It's almost the reverse of what I want, but it's so much like fur that it kind of works for me. That I'm not not worried about it too much. Okay, so there's not really much else brown-wise. I mean, he's got a little bit around his eyes, which I got. Some of the other photos, it's more brown than others. Doesn't really have it around the lips too much, but I'm going to do something there just to get it to be not so perfectly white around. Almost as if it's painted in shadow. something to transition into the black otherwise it's going to be pretty harsh some white mixed with the yellow in the end maybe now all right let's try some black let's see if we can't finish off these eyes just got some plain water here just washing my brush as I go All right, now, this black is pretty watered down. It's not had too much drying out. So if I want super coverage, I can't really, uh, eh, I don't know, it's pretty good. It's not so bad. I mean, it's, you can see it's pretty thin though if I, I spread it, it will be gray and gross, but we'll see what happens. 
think I can get enough in a little bit of a bead. And this is part where I do not want to get it all over the piece, so I'm wet paper toweling my fingers. I'm being careful not to get that glob all over my hand. Alrighty, let's see if we can get in that little eye there. Now, this is a chance where uh, a nice old crusty brush that's got a very, very fine point on it might be advantageous for this. So instead of using a small one that's got a fluffy tip, I want just a real thin line. Let's see if I can't uh, just bead a little black into the eye there and get that accented up nicely. Bad. So at least I can even scratch a little bit lighter black around, almost like that. Uh, you can see that there's there's black skin under the fur there, around the eye. I'm not trying to be super realistic, but having a little bit of a bleed of that black around the eye is going to help make it look even more interesting and realistic. I don't know. Let's find out. Looks like in the corner of the eye is even more black, which is kind of nice looking. Yeah, I like that. Well, don't like that. Good thing is it's mostly dry underneath, so just dry off the brush and scratch it back. I end up cleaning most of that off what I just messed up. And come back at that with a little bit of white and clean it up later. Mostly I like it. I like what that did. I'll do a little bit more on the outside corner just to get that little bit of a blink uh, where that skin skin is very dark around there where there's no hair. And you can even see his little blonde eyelashes coming down. But I think just having that hint of a of an eye fold is enough. I don't want to go too crazy. This is sort of just a cartoon version. All right, I like that. It kind of works. Set the other side. Okay, come back at that with a little white and it'll be good to go. All right, let's see if we can do that same thing around the nose, in front of that lip. <laughs> yes, kitty. Fine. She's 
having weird dreams. All right, that's looking about right. Don't want to give him a mustache. So I'm just going to start spreading little strokes into the fur here. Let's see what happens. Not too much, too much. I'll come back at it with white. All right. I think I'm just going to do black on the inside because, uh, you know, dogs and their skin on the lips can be black, and this one is. I'm not trying to get too close to the tongue, and it will come at the roof of the mouth later. Microphone's on, right? Looks like it. All right, the nose is gonna look super weird white until I get done this part. I think I'm okay for now. All right. Yeah, more like what it's doing. A little gray. A little mix tint there. I'll come back with the white and come at the other direction. And I think we'll have it. And normally I probably should have done black last, but I kind of want to see where this is going. black. All right, I'll come back at that with white again. That should be okay. Come around this guy. Let's see, he's got a little bit of a lip sticking out there, but it looks like his chin. Yeah, he's got a little bit down here too. I'm looking at some other pics. Not too worried about it. I 
that's about it. I'll get a little more dark in there, maybe a thin bit, just so it's not white on white. Yeah, it's gonna be too hard to get in there with this brush is all missed. All right, I'm gonna get some pink on the tongue. Mixed with white. I could just use the uh, straight white mixed with a pink is uh, gonna make it real harsh. So I'm gonna stick with this sort of rose pink already to start. It's pretty darn close, and then just mix it with maybe a little bit of flesh instead of uh, straight white. Tricky to do one-handed. All right, let's get this. And of course it's stuck. Oh, he's getting pretty close. He's getting pretty close. From far away, it's looking good. And of course I forgot to shake it. Ay. Oh, I caught it. <laughs> okay. All right, now I need a brush that is clean. I'm gonna get right in there and do a full coat on that. While it's wet, I'm gonna come back at it and do the highlights. Let's see what happens. So I am getting close to final coats, so these little mistakes that I roughly kind of ignored, I'm going to try to hit clean. may come down to a solid color. Sometimes when this black is a little too in there, let's see, I'm gonna have to probably scrape it out a little bit. So having a tool or a knife handy is not a bad idea. Just don't want that black on the tongue right there in that crack. It's a little too wet and solid for coverage. I'm probably going to come back with some darker color to make some fake lighting, but not right now. Oh, hey, looks like some people are here. Thanks for joining. How you all doing? I'm not sure how live this live thing is. But, uh, welcome, thanks, I appreciate it. I'm gonna try to get this finished. Not a huge job, but uh, enough to do that I uh, figured it would be a good subject to start. Me, I guess, yeah, I do not want strokes of hair on the tongue. So I'm gonna have to do lots of coverage there. Probably just glop it on pretty thick. So I'm gonna just keep coming back with a super wet drip on my brush. It's actually working out pretty well. Just gonna let that build up. Hmm, there you go. How about that? See, the white underneath is actually not doing too bad for um, letting it be a little lighter at the sides. So, kind of want to leave it. Oi. Yeah. 
Yeah, shaky hands. What am I gonna do? I feel like that old guy in Toy Story. What was it two? Maybe not quite that shaky, but it's tricky. I don't feel like I'm shaking while I'm doing something, but trying to hold my hand steady is nearly impossible. All right, this is getting a little too globbed up and not pointy enough to get in there, so I'm going to try to just glob a big glob on there and poke it in there with the tool, because I think that's the best way to get in there without having to redo the whole thing. All right. Nice and sharp. I'm just going to drag it in there with the tip of this sharp tool. Hey, hey, there we go. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good trick for uh, getting a clean edge. it. I can always come back with the black too. Kind of back and forth game with acrylics. Not bad, not bad. Just dip right in there. Nope, that's why I didn't dip in there. Get it on both sides and then you have a messy tool. wet it looks perfect might even go over it with a little gloss afterwards just to get that wet tongue because it's ridiculously adorable all right now what let's see I got the black might come on it again Could probably do the nose now I'm holding on to it it's pretty dry yeah let's get the nose going all right, so this nose is definitely not all black. He's got a little brown underneath. So I'm gonna hit that first. It's uh, probably not exactly that color brown. It looks a little more pinkish in some of the tones I'm looking at. I think I'm gonna hit some pink on it first. Just to get a nice undercoat of pink before I go back at it. All right, looks like all the high points, so across the bridge, down the front. Yeah, you can see why. When it gets to be this thin, the acrylics are pretty tricky, but if you do this little go back and forth, you can get a clean coverage. I don't really care too much. I just want some tone under there, because I'm about to mix it with the brown anyway. So I just wanted to get a little bit of pink in the right place. And then I'm going to brown it up anyway. So I'm going to come around it from other angles. Actually, yeah, his ears and eyes are looking pretty good. I like it. I wasn't quite sure how this was going to turn out. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, I'm going to come back in. So I, I know that I'm going to come back in with black anyway to do the final. But it's nice to have the black not 100% black. So I'm actually purposefully dripping a bunch of brown into the nostrils there so I can hit it with the black and blend it on purpose. I think it'll be a nice result. Just keeping it from being 100% black or 100% white anywhere. Oh, look at that cute little face. Too much. Too much. All 
So, like I was saying earlier, you guys, everybody is here now. You might have missed it. Uh, I am open to suggestions. I'm probably going to end up, if I can keep going regular, finally, I will uh, like some suggestions of stuff to make. And if you're lucky, I'll pick you and send you a fun little gift. Because I'm not doing this for money. I don't care. I'm just going to do this for fun and make some fun things for people. Alright, getting pretty good coat of brown on there. I'm going to come at it with the black now, and it should be nice. So it's got a little bit of red, as you can see. Not a ton, but completely covered with the brown, but a real nice little hint of pink, which is exactly what I wanted. So I would say that was a gamble. That worked. Now, I probably want this to dry a little bit. So you see, the more I, more I hit it, the more I'm pulling away the paint from the top layer and making it more we're revealing the white so I'm gonna maybe come back at the white now at this point clean up around the black around the snout Just a nice little back and forth game with the strokes hinting at the hairs but it, it makes a difference that seems to be working so I'm gonna keep going with it All right. So again, just dry brushing it on, so mostly wiping most of the paint off, getting it nice and dry out of the brush, and then either coming at it or pulling away, but I don't want to get, yeah, not enough. All right. Obviously covering white with black is a little harder to do, so maybe I have to do a little thicker. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I like that. That transition's getting better and better. Gonna have to wait for this to dry. But I think it looks pretty close. Really too much water. Looks like a nice little furry transition there. Getting all washed out by the the hot light, but it's there and it looks good. Okay, now whisker bumps. I've kind of already got them sculpted in there. I'm not sure if I need to paint. Unless you're gonna stick real whiskers in, which hmm, not a bad idea. But um, this is a fun free gift, so I'm not really going to have time for that. Oh, I like that. Oh, he's getting there. He's getting there. I'm so close. Really not that much more to do. It's 
Just cleaning up a little bit around the, the corner of the mouth here. Even just going over it with a thin coat of the white will make that black. It still shows through a little bit, which is exactly where I want. I wanted a little bit of hint at fur or skin underneath for that transition. So just doing an on purpose light coat was is exactly what I wanted there. So that works out. Same thing around the eyes, should finish that up. And cleaning up around this lip so that it's not, I don't want to see any unintentional looking little black bumps there. So I'm going to be real picky and just hit those with the white, which is going to be really nice for a fur look because it'll give me a, a mix between that blonde. There we go. Well, that's some finish work there. As you see, as the white dries, it gets thinner and thinner, so it um, it's a little tricky. I'm not really 100% sure what's going to happen. I'm sort of just guessing. Um, have I always lived in Canada? No, I have not. I'm actually from West Virginia if you believe that. But I grew up in Pennsylvania, near Philly. So my accent is all over the place. I make no apologies. But I've been up here for ooh, 20 years now. Just after I got married and have kids. So yeah, I'm uh, Super old, guys. Super old. But, uh, yeah, full Canadian now and American. Same time. Pretty easy. I'm just kidding. It was a lot. You have to apply. It's a whole process. Not super easy. Americans can't just move up here. You have to marry somebody or apply. It's a whole thing. It costs money and time. All right. I am really liking how that's coming out on the snout. Pretty happy with it. I might even hit a hit a dark little black line just to really accentuate that in between. And then, uh, whew, yeah, just a black touch up around the nose, golden up the little name tag and I would say we're done yeah I really don't want to poke too much around his whiskers I think I'm just gonna leave those little black dots as they are might come back there's a couple little things that look spotty on camera which again this white every time it dries it just uh, gets a little thinner and a little thinner so not a bad thing to have a few more little strokes and they'll, they'll come out thicker. This acrylic will shrink as it dries, so I'm not worried about a big thick glob too much, especially if I want it to cover. So I'm just gonna go around that and hit a few more strokey sort of fur direction things, which is exactly what I want it to do. And that should dry a little more subtle and look a lot like fur which I think will be nice. Ooh, I like that. Mm -mm -mm. It's coming out nice. Coming out nice. Uh, it's not not a hundred percent sure what was going to happen with this. But I'm really liking how this fur is turning out. But 
But yeah, I kind of approach the paint, the painting as I do with the clay. I'm, it's a lot of back and forth, push and pull, feeling it out as I go. I suppose there's different approaches. You know exactly what you're doing. More like that. So I'm just hitting it, hitting it with some real subtle little strokes there. But that's gonna look. It's gonna really help the fur direction look, and uh, I can even stroke over them afterwards. As they dry, I can hit them and streak them out. Oh, it's looking good. Yeah, I like that. Mm -mm -mm. It's pretty subtle. It's it's really hard to see on the white on white, but um, the strokes are really helping. It's uh, it's looking a lot like a nice little fur transition there. I gotta get some better lights. All right, I am pretty happy with that. Oh, look at that little doggy. So cute. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the black, and then I think we're name tagging it, and we're gonna wrap this one up. The Canadian winters, uh, they're a lot like Pennsylvania winters, to be honest. I'm a, you know, Ontario right by the lake, so it's not, uh, it's not too different. But yeah, a little north of me, they are frozen and I feel bad for them. But uh, yeah, New England, Pennsylvania, New York, it's pretty much the same weather. In southern Ontario. All right, we're going for the black now. I'm pretty sure I'm good with the browns. It's looking good. What's up, kitty? You want some more bellies? Yeah. You silly cat. Oh. This nose is just about dry, which is exactly where I want it to be. Still a little wet in the nostrils, which is great. So I'll get a nice mix of black in there. Working on movie projects? No, I work at uh, Gameloft Studios in Toronto, uh, in the games industry mostly, 3D work and such. Still do some freelance, but mostly for apps. I was doing toy design and uh, prototype stuff for a few years, which is why I have some 3D printer stuff and I'm quite versed in that. All right, let's get this crack going here. There we go. I'm just trying to finish up these lines, make it nice and clean. if I start poking in with the wet brush. So I'm gonna kind of leave that. I'm gonna mix a little bit of black in with this, with this uh, roof of the mouth, just so it's not exactly the same as the tongue there. I 
again if I start going back and forth and bumping this brush it's just gonna get worse so I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead there I think it's pretty darn close okay let's get this black on the nose Now I'm going to try to just go around the edge of it and then blend in, but I've got to be real careful with how much paint I lay down here because I do not want to get it too wet. <laughs> Game loft, yeah well, they've gotten better in recent years, so I've heard, I've only been at this studio for two years. But they've been real, real good to me. It's a nice company. Trying to hit that ring real tight and clean. You see how that, that transition, subtle transition I did with the, uh, the the black into the gray into the white fur is exactly what I wanted on the tip there. Just keeps it from looking so purely cartoony, you know. Which is exactly what I was more going for here. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna just now spread what I have on here as it dries into the into the rest and you know if you look at the texture on a nose it's pretty weird uh, almost like a little cracked looking skin so I'm gonna try to go around and do that and I'm gonna keep those little pools of brown in the nostrils for when I want to come back so I'm just on purpose I'm just gonna stipple this in this transition and see what happens then I'm going to hit the brown in the nostrils with the black, mix it in, come back at the tips. Let's see what happens there. I think that's working. I think that's working. And maybe a little dusting over it. But I kind of like that color. I don't really want to mess with that brown, that browny pink there. But look at that nice little texture I'm getting. Oh, let's get the other do that doodad on here. There we go. You can see that texture on the tip of the nose there. Actually, that's a lot easier to see around the eyes, too. Look at the, you can see the, the texture going, the blends there. I am pretty happy with that. Alrighty, now I'm going to get into the... I have to hold it closer to stay in focus now, but I'll see if we're doing some of that. Oh, well, it's hard to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so young anymore. I gotta switch back. I can't hold it that close. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get that black in the deepest parts, and I think we're good. Uh, yeah, I like that. Blammo. Oh, no, that's a doggy nose. Still good. I like it. All right, I'm I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead, guys. <laughs> I don't think I can. I don't think I can mess with that any better. So, all right. So now the question is, do I hit black first and then do the gold? I want I want the letters in the little sun to be black, like the tag. And the problem is gold does not, eh, well, we'll see. This gold's pretty good. I got this, this Liquitex one is actually not that bad. It'll cover, it'll cover pretty clean, but you know, as with any metallic pigments, it's, you know, it gets gloopy real easy. You can, you can really mess it up by doing too many strokes. So I'm gonna see if I can't just get this in all the cracks wipe it away real quick and then do dry brushing with gold on top let's find out so i'm basically doing like an ink wash almost 
pretty watery black all the cracks cracks there we go now quickly wiping it wet paper towel oh yeah there we go hey it works Hey, hey, not bad. Can almost read it. It's really hard to do nail, uh, little letters that small. I mean, they're they're real tiny. I was basically using a uh, the tip of a dental tool, I'm going over it and over it and over it, and then switching between that and this little this little ball guy just to hit the tops of it off. But you see, this is the smallest of these balls and it is still too big. But yeah, this dental tool, this little guy, little tip, tricky stuff. But I think it was a nice detail, it added a lot to it. Also helps you know who the dog is. Ooh, eh, I'm just keep noticing little bits that I might wanna touch up later, so. Maybe not going to put the black away. Oh, don't mess it up. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to hit this with some gloss. It's such a nice look when it's a little wet. Oh, come on. Yeah, see, it got a little too wet and I just poked a little bit too far through with a stiff brush so I gotta just hit it with a big drop and leave it alone until it dries that'll work all right let's just uh, stop messing with this <laughs> gotta wrap this up uh, creative freedom with my projects are you talking about my projects at uh, at a game studio? Not too much. I mean, we mostly work on Disney Magic Kingdoms, which is a pretty big content machine game. But we are we are doing some new games, which of course I'm not allowed to talk about. But yeah, there's some creative freedom. There's a lot of a lot of collaboration, which is great. All right, I'm just gonna use this as a palette. Actually, I only need a tiny bit of gold. Uh, who cares? I'm just gonna do my finger again. I only need the tiniest little bit. So, as with any of these golds, they, they come out milky and they dry darker. So, this one gets like a nice deep orangey antique gold, which is good. So I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna try to hit the hit the heavy parts first. See what the coverage is like. I'm gonna have to come over it. This is gonna take a few coats, probably. Let's see if I keep stroking it, I kind of wipe it away as I go, but. I hit it real light and let the paint kind of glob. I get a nice clean, clean uh, coverage. A little bumpy. I'm trying not to make it too blobby. But if I let that dry, it should be just right in one coat, which tricky to do but anyway I do have my tool if I do a little spill like that I can just come at it with this scrape away done what would be my talent in an alternate universe oh my goodness jeez I don't know depends on which variant 
I'm sure there's lots of things I could have been doing. I almost got into musical theater, but uh, you know, I wanted to make money. <laughs> that wasn't good enough after high school. It's a, you know, kind of a wake up call when you realize, you know, there's a lot of other people who do the same things. So, trying to be practical, I dovetailed into computer stuff. I do a lot of different things. I really enjoy cooking. I think I'm okay at it. But uh, this this universe turn isn't over yet, so we'll see. We'll see what I get into. All right, I'm liking this gold. Oh, such a nice gold. Good luck finding gold in any craft store close to Christmas because somebody goes in there and buys it all. It's not me. But yeah, gold spray paint, non-existent. Oh, for crying out loud. Stupid brushes. Yeah, I got some old brushes, guys. You can see the paint has long since worn off of this one from using it as a stir stick and soak it in water. I don't care. I got a lot of brushes that still work. I'm not going to throw it out. All right, now this is where it's going to get tricky. If I start rubbing over back and forth over this, I'm going to lose all that lovely little black inside the crack, but I gotta at some point get in between these letters, so I'm gonna see if I can't lightly dry brush over. It seems to be working. Yeah, anyway, we'll see. I probably should have done a nice clean gold first and then black washed, but you know, black washing on top, uh, this gold is so thin, I just wasn't confident it would stay. And uh, I kind of don't want to do it. So I'm spending a little more time maybe doing it this way. But I think it's working. It's looking pretty gold to me. I can read it well. And even if a little gold gets in that crack, I mean, it's kind of a... No, it is. It's not just a stamp. But again, this is a... Flattering likeness, as I say. So, that's close enough. Looking good, Joaquin. Looking good. All right, I like this. I think we're just about done here. <laughs> oh, and of course I smudge it. All right, that's looking pretty good. All righty. Oh, looks like we're hitting about an hour and a half. Wow. All right, well, thanks, everybody. We probably should get to my other stuff. And I'll, um, I'll see about doing something regular. I've been meaning to for years. I keep putting it off, but uh, my internet's good now and seems to be working. Don't mind doing it this way. I'm uh, ever the frugal, so as I do, I save this little glob because I can't throw it out. Alright, so that's about it here. Looking pretty good. Let me hold them up, see if we can match the angle. 
That'll do. That'll do. All right, guys. Thanks again. And I will see you around. Where is the stop button? Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.